Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to today's live stream. And uh, there was an article in Nature that came out on Wednesday that was very interesting, and it kind of triggered me to go ahead and talk a little bit about leprosy and in humans and in animals, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but let, let me, let's go ahead and start with... Um, some of the basics about leprosy or Hansen's disease. And um, this is from the CDC. And Hansen's disease, also known as leprosy, is an infection caused by a slow growing bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. It can affect the nerves, skin, eyes, and lining of the nose. With early diagnosis and treatment, the disease can be cured. People with Hansen's disease can continue to work and lead an active life during and after treatment. Uh, it was once feared as a highly contagious and devastating disease, but now we know it's not that um, contagious and it can be easily treated. As, as a matter of fact, about 95% of us would never get um, leprosy. Um, however, it can get, be very disfiguring. It can be crippling. It can cause uh, blindness. So there's a lot of real big problems with leprosy. Um, so it's, as we already spoke, it's, it's caused by the bacterium, Mycobacterium leprae, very slow growers. And it can take up to 20 years for you to even show signs of infection. Uh, and it affects the nerves, skin, eyes, nose. Um, a lot of times the skin changes color and either can become lighter, like hypopigmented or darker, hyperpigmented. Uh, it can become red due to inflammation. Um, if it's untreated, there's, there could be a lot of nerve damage that can result in paralysis of the hands and feet. Um, it can, you know, really affect the digits, the hands, uh, toes, fingers, um, yeah, so it's, it's just a very, very horrible disease. It, it, it has a history uh, going all the way to biblical times. And um, let's uh, take a look at transmission. Uh, though it's not exactly known how it spreads, uh, they believe it's, uh, it could be aerosol. It could be when a person coughs or sneezes, and uh, the healthy person breathes in the droplets. What they do believe is prolonged close contact with someone untreated uh, with untreated leprosy over many months is needed to catch the disease. So it's not easy to catch. And uh, there's, of course, leprosy just from its appearance and the perceived notion that it's really easy to contract and spread it. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of people that have uh, been shunned from society Um there used to be leper colonies. Uh, so there's there's a lot of stigma that goes along with uh, leprosy. Uh, it says you cannot get leprosy from casual contact, shaking hands, sitting next to each other on a bus, sitting together for a meal. It's not passed from the mother to the unborn baby during pregnancy, and it's not spread through sexual contact. And uh, we're going to, there's an armadillo, and we're going to talk a little bit briefly about the Armadillo is one of the animals that can have leprosy. Uh, signs and symptoms, we kind of touched on some of this. Discoloration, um, uh, nodules in the skin, thick, stiff or dry skin, uh, painless ulcers, swelling lumps uh, on the face or earlobes. We'll take a look at that. And there's dam nerve damage that's pretty serious. Um, and it can lead to, there's eye problems you can get. Uh, when the facial nerves are affected. So there's there there's a lot of pathology that goes along with uh, with Hansen's disease or leprosy. Uh, diagnosis, it's typically recognized um, by its uh, symptomology, the, the appearance of the uh, skin. Um, now, if they want to confirm the diagnosis, they will take a sample of your skin or nerve and uh, look for the bacteria microscopically. Uh, it's treated with a combination of antibiotics, uh, 
two to three antibiotics are used at the same time. And uh, the treatment's rather long, it's up to two years. Uh, but if you complete the treatment as prescribed, uh, you, you can be cured of leprosy. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at another website that has a lot of pretty cool bullet points about leprosy. And that's the Hansen's Disease, um, National Hansen's Disease Program. And let's take a look at that. That's some good stuff. And I, I do love these bullet points. Uh, most, 95% of the human population is not susceptible to infection with M. leprae. Uh, treatment with standard antibiotic drugs is very effective. Patients become non-infectious after taking only a few doses of medication and need not be isolated from family and friends. Uh, diagnosis in the U.S., where we're based out of, is often delayed because providers are just uh, unaware of leprosy. It's just not a common thing here in this country. Uh, we do see, you know, a couple hundred cases a year, um, but it, that's far, far from common, right? Um, early diagnosis and treatment prevents nerve involvement. Uh, this is the hallmark of leprosy and the disability it causes. Um, without nerve involvement, Hansen's disease would be a minor skin disease. Okay, the latest numbers that this organization has for is from 2020. And in the U.S., there was 159 new cases reported in the country. Seven out of 10 of those new cases were reported from uh, just a handful of states, six states. That would be Florida, California, Louisiana, Hawaii, New York, and Texas. Um so yeah, so let's uh, move on from that and take a look at um, a couple pictures uh, from this from the CDC um, website and uh, get a good look at some of the morpho the uh, morphology of of the of the disease in, in a person and here the, here's a case of leprosy in the ear. And you can see how it's swollen. Uh, this patient exhibited symptoms indicative of a case of lepromatous leprosy caused by uh, Mycobacterium leprae. The patient's left ear has become swollen or thickened and has been infused with an inflammatory infiltrate. And apparently this patient has the same situation in both ears. All right. And... Then we have another photograph. I'm just going to show two. There's there's so many, but this this is a more advanced case, and it's of the hands. Let me go ahead and bring that up. Hopefully you can see it. There we go. Yeah, that's 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 pretty rough right there. And uh, this image depicts a dorsal surface of the hands of a patient with a case of nodular lep. Prometheus leprosy. Um, the digits of both hands have been eroded over the course of the illness, and you will note that the skin exhibited numerous cutaneous nodules, which were indicative of late stage disease. So, you can get another look at that. That's uh, that's something that could happen without treatment, right? So, so that's pretty uh, pretty disfiguring. I'm not sure about the neurological issues there, but I imagine that could be a problem too. Um, the next thing I want to take a look at is since, you know, one of the things I wanted to really look at were leprosy in animals. Um, th there's, a, there's only a few uh, that, we, that we know of. Um, and one is the armadillo. And let me go ahead and bring up this study. Now, they, they knew that the armadillo, well, for the longest time, it was believed that only humans could get leprosy. And uh, that changed in the 1970s when it was isolated from armadillos. And 
here we go. Probable zoonotic leprosy in the southern United States. And I'll just go over real quickly the background and the conclusion. And this is from 10 years ago. This is from 2011. In the southern region of the United States, such as in Louisiana and Texas, there are locally transmitted cases of leprosy among native-born Americans with no history of foreign exposure. In the same region, as well as in Mexico, wild armadillos are infected with Mycobacterium leprae. And uh, Florida is one of them, where I'm based out of. Uh, every year we see a handful of cases in this state. Conclusions. Wild armadillos and many patients with leprosy in the southern United States are infected with the same strain of M. leprae. Armadillos are a large natural reservoir for the bacteria, and leprosy may be a zoonosis in the region. And I know here in the state they do, for obvious reasons, recommend you not handling armadillos, um, any kind of wild animal, but armadillos is for this one specific reason. Okay. Let's see, I wanna go on to the next critter. And this is kind of a more recent um, discovery, uh, to put it one way. And I've been seeing some reports over the recent, recent years about red squirrels having leprosy in the UK and in Ireland. And uh, in this particular study, they were testing all kinds of other rodents to see if anything else, any other rodent was carrying uh, the leprosy um, bacterium and none of them were, but there's been hundreds of cases found in red squirrels on the British Isles. And I got a picture of a red squirrel and we'll see how it looks like on the screen. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can blow up the picture a little bit. And what you can see in this particular squirrel is you have the swollen snout and you can see the the leprosy type uh, activity going on there in the ear. Not quite as obvious as, as um, some of the pictures we saw from the humans, but uh, yeah, uh, again, not sure why these red squirrels are getting it. And then I want to go on to the, the, the main story for the day. And it's really, really fascinating. Um, and it, it's a study that came out in Nature. And that was, I think it came out online on Wednesday. And um, it's uh, pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. And I'll just go through at least the abstract, there's so much to talk about um, if I go too far and uh, time is of the essence. But leprosy in wild chimpanzees, let's see what it says. Humans are considered as the main host for Mycobacterium leprae, the etiological agent of leprosy. But spillover has occurred to other mammals that are now maintenance hosts, such as nine-banded armadillos and bred squirrels. Although naturally acquired leprosy has been described in captive non-human primates, the exact origins of infection remain unclear. Now, in this paper, they describe leprosy-like lesions in two, two wild populations of Western chimpanzees. In Cantanhez National Park in the country of Guinea-Bissau and Thai National Park in the Ivory Coast, both in West Africa. Longitudinal monitoring of both populations revealed the progression of disease symptoms compatible with advanced leprosy. Screening of fecal and necropsy samples confirmed the presence of Mycobacterium leprae as the causative agent at each site and phylogenomic comparisons with the other strains from humans and other animals. This is very interesting. Show that the chimpanzee strains belong 
to different and rare genotypes. So you got you know, two, two groups of chimpanzees in two different countries with two different uh, um, uh, mycobacterium leprae uh, genotypes. These findings suggest that M. leprae may be circulating in more wild animals than suspected, either as a result of exposure to humans or other unknown environmental sources. Are there other mammals out there uh, that are uh, that carry leprosy? Is is it anything they could be eating? Are they are they uh, other types of monkeys? Uh, non-human primates. These are a lot of a lot of questions that haven't been answered in, to this point. Um, and then uh, I wanted to go over kind of quickly, so I can close this out. Um, some of the photographs that went along with the study, and I'll link to the study uh, in the show notes when I go ahead and uh, publish it. Uh, but it's pretty interesting photographs let's go ahead and take a look at it all right here we go so in a i mean you can see all the nodules on the face on the forehead the hands the feet and uh, in letter a let me try to make that a little bit bigger yeah and it's, it's Oh, it's not going to let me move it around too much. Then you can see it on the, on the second photograph um, where he's got some nodules going on in his hind, um, hind quarter area. And then this photograph, it's a, another chimp with, uh, looks like even more severe uh, facial nodules. And... Here's another one with very obvious nodules on the hands over here. And he, here there's some, uh, um, oh, I, I skipped this one. Yeah, let, let's see what this one says about the, the hand. It says claw hand with nail loss and abnormal overgrowth of fingernails. So apparently that's a uh, indication of leprosy. And then in uh, photograph number G, scrotal reddening and ulceration with fresh blood. So clearly these poor chimps are probably in, in a lot of pain too. So, so it's, they're pretty cool pictures, but it's also kind of sad to take a look at it. Um, but again, the mystery is, you know, because it, it's not likely based on if you take a look at the study that there's been any kind of significant human exposure uh, with these animals. So where did they get it? Um, somewhere in the wild. So we'll be definitely be keeping an eye on this and see if any there's any um, twists and turns that lead us to um, more information about this. But uh, again, like I said, I'll go ahead and link to it. And you can take a look at it yourself. It, it has all the uh, genomic uh, information and it's, it's, it's quite a fascinating study. I would definitely encourage you to check it out. And that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go ahead and share that with you. I uh, thought it was interesting, and I hope you did too. And um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care now.